Okay, we're back. We're live. We're fresh back from the Walk Market in Chinatown, where we did a live show with our live view. Fabulous. We talked to everybody in the market. What a scene. I think that goes everywhere, deep into the bowels of Chinatown. There we go. <laughs> and then back to Ethan Allen <laughs> with Likeable Science. Hi, Ethan. Hey, Jay. Nice to be here. <laughs> so you were looking at the MIT uh, newsletter, and you found some interesting articles about cyber war. What did you find? So there's been this intriguing piece that, that you may have heard about in the news. It's it just sort of now surfacing. Uh, it turns out apparently Russia has been practicing cyber warfare, refining their techniques for several years, uh, primarily using Ukraine as sort of their testing ground for all kinds of techniques and approaches and consistently refining them, making them more and more sophisticated, uh, not just knocking out turning off lights for a while, but, but taking out whole systems, greater and greater systems with more and more sophistication, taking them out in, at different levels, in some cases out sort of the, the fringes of the system, other cases right out of the heart. Uh, at times doing it sort of anonymously, at other times literally taking control away from the operators of the system who are sitting there suddenly and their local machines don't work, but they're watching the mouse scroll around on the screen turning, out, turning off switches. It's uh, out of a bad movie. It is. It, it's, it's truly frightening, but apparently this has been going on, and they are doing this. They have been practicing it. They have seen so far no real serious repercussions to it, so they're just continuing to move ahead. And that the, a key part of this, there's a, a so-called Trojan software that allows you to import other software into computers, and that has already widely infected U.S. Uh, systems, including systems of our power grids and things like that. This, this malware now lives in these systems, so they'll be able to slip more stuff in whenever they want. Yeah, well, you know, this reminds me of the, um, the, the methodology used by the Stuxnet virus back a few years ago, which was a, a joint project between the U.S. and Israel. Mm -hmm. and they wanted to hit the centrifuges in Iran right. uh, and blow them up somehow, you know, and render them useless. Right. And so they found a software um, uh, that would go around the world Mm -hmm. But it would, would rest in a certain kind of Siemens controller made in Germany that they knew were used, um, you know, in, in these centrifuges. And it went hither and yon, all over the place, everywhere. But it didn't do anything until it got to the Siemens controllers in, in Iran. Uh, and then it did some damage. But then it essentially turned up centrifuges way past their top safety point and they yes. burn themselves out, basically. Right. So, well, yeah. yes, that was true, but they also <laughs> slowed them down. So it was, you know, you couldn't figure what was going to happen. It was clever. Unfortunately, um, A, they found out, well, they found out the hard way. I mean, the Iranians mm -hmm. did. And then they hired a bunch of uh, cyber war people themselves mm -hmm. uh, in order to rebuild that system. And now I don't think we can hack it into it very well. <laughs> but the point in all of that is that you can have malware that goes around the world mm -hmm. and it can sleep or do nothing and then it can do targeted things in one local region one local company one local room mm -hmm. uh you know the whole world to one room the whole world to one siemens controller mm -hmm. and that's what we're coping with here because as the russians use ukraine as a laboratory for their malware they're actually testing the whole world sure sure and, uh, you know, apparently it's got several different levels where there's already, in, they get malware installed that will allow the importation of more malware and quietly slip that in and let it sit, just sit quietly, infecting more and more machines, but not doing any harm until... That's so what they want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that's really creepy because what it means is we are already in the run-up to World War III. Um, in fact, some people think we are in World War III in terms mm -hmm. of cyber war, mm -hmm. uh, and this kind of stuff is all over the place right, uh, right now, and those sleeping viruses are all over the place. Right. I mean, the only, I guess, uh, upside is that the U.S. apparently is doing much the same thing, although I guess we haven't tested ours as openly. But Yeah. Well, it's either mutual destruction <laughs> or mutual detente. <laughs> you know, but I mean, the problem is, and I don't think people realize this, is if you could knock off a power plant, and the Russians have done that, mm -hmm. they've, they've closed down government agencies. Right close down all kinds of facilities mm -hmm. in the Ukraine. If you can knock off a power plant, all of a sudden, no power, mm -hmm. and no hospitals, no traffic lights, no telephones, right. no nothing, and you're reduced to um, you know, the, the rubble of civilization, and people begin to devolve, uh, and they begin to you know, act out. 
mm -hmm. and then society as we knew it, you know, stops. Mm -hmm. And this is a big problem. You don't, you don't have to go further. You don't have to have guns. Right. All you have to do is terminate the power. Right. You know, if, if, if you can sort of destroy the whole uh, energy sources that keep us all organized, yeah. It's, yeah. And apparently these systems can be used to, to just sort of knock stuff out, turn it off, so you can go back in and turn it on. Or in some cases, again, they, they can run generators past their safety points. They can override, kill switches, yeah. and, and burn things out and literally uh, destroy equipment. One of the interesting things, I mean, of course, Russia under Putin wants to do this kind of thing. They want uh, global hegemony, and, and they want um, to be able to attack people and show you just how you know, mm -hmm. powerful, right? He's into that. Mm -hmm. And he comes from the KGB, so he's into all this kind of dirty tricks, espionage. Mm -hmm. That's not a surprise. Remember, right. remember what happened with the, the, that radioactive material right. that, his, um, that his enemies keep on eating, yep. Yep. and it kills them. Right. It's still happening, you know? Right. Um, but it's, 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 it's not only that, it's every single weapon that you can put your hands on, and then you have this kind of deceptive facade where you say, oh, it wasn't me. Right. But it was. And what he's doing in Ukraine should not be a secret. Everyone should know right. about that. But here's the thing. How did he do it? How did he get that kind of sophistication? Now, you know, there have been hackers from Russia for many years, right. uh, from all parts of Russia, and for that matter, Eastern Europe, and for that matter, Eastern Russia. You know, Vladivostok mm -hmm. is a haven sure. for um, hackers, mm -hmm. I mean, global hackers, right. who think up nasty malware all day long. It's a it's been a hobby for them, but mm -hmm. somehow he assembled a workforce right. to do hacking on a large scale. Can you talk about that? Well, again, that's, yeah, it's not, not well understood, I think, as to how this happened, but basically they, uh, the powers that be in, in Russia realized this was sort of the next frontier of a warfare, and that's where the battles were going to be fought. I mean, it, you know, Yes, you, the other guy may have missiles, but if you can take control of his missiles, they don't do him any good, right? Sure. You, know, you can spend billions on missiles, but they can be rendered right. useless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if instead of going to the target they intend, oops, they turn around and come back at the person oh, who fired so them. Or worse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or blow up where, where, where they're sitting, you know. I remember reading, uh, you know, when this first started to come out about the hacking of the election, uh, that he had assembled a force from three sources. Uh, one was the army, his own mm -hmm. army. Uh, which, like the Chinese army, uh, you know, has a certain amount of talent in this department. And if you, uh, as we do, mm -hmm. and if you assign them a task of developing hacking software, um, you know, cyber war software, then they will. But you need, uh, you need the young, you need the kids, you need mm -hmm. the hackers in Vladivostok, mm -hmm. you need the hackers in, in Western Russia, Eastern Europe, you need right. them. So you assemble them and you make deals with them. You have right. to negotiate arrangements with them. Sure. And then you bring them into the fold and they help the army in hacking. Yeah. There's a third kind, and I'm, I remember reading this somewhere, there's a third kind. That's, that's the, 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 uh, the criminal element, mm -hmm. uh, who either hacks criminally or who are criminals in jail. And, and uh, Putin or the Russian government makes um, deals with them too and brings them into this very large force of, of hackers, mm -hmm. which are in separate cells, not necessarily all in the same right. building or room. Sure. And they have their instructions on, you know, not only creating software, but on deploying the software. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the election, it was deploying, um, you know, misinformation, disinformation, as the KGB has done right. since its inception. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I mean, there's always, I think, in your military forces and all, there, there's always an element of people who want to, like, sort of show the, the guys who think they have control of security that they really don't. You know? sure. uh, uh, Richard Feynman was apparently a, a great one for doing that kind of thing and then slipping notes into the secret files where the, the security guys would suddenly open up a file drawer that was supposed to be secure and there'd be a note from Richard and it saying, ha ha, you know, <laughs> but you didn't expect to see this here, you know. Um, it's funny, but it's not. <laughs> right, right. Uh, on that level, it's funny, but yes, when, when instead it's somebody really, you know, doing malicious hacking and harm hacking, that's, that's, yeah, that's no laughing matter at all. Yeah. So I think he put these, these guys together and he adopted a program, as, as China has adopted, of doing very sophisticated uh, hacking, testing, more hacking, right. more testing, to see if he could achieve global supremacy in, in hacking and cyber, cyber anti-security. Sure, and it's much cheaper. I mean, you don't have to build sophisticated nuclear weapons and, and get fantastic delivery systems going. 
I mean, yeah, you, you develop some lines of code and sort of send them out in the world to, to see, see what harm they'll do. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so it's an intellectual process. Right. And the aggressive hacker is not at risk of losing his life or being wounded or maimed or anything like right. that. Right, yeah, catching a deadly disease, right. It's, it's a great way to, to yeah, go. exactly. And, and, and cheap, basically. I mean, you're pay, you pay Relatively. a good salary and, and you, know, you don't have to buy fancy Although I, I hear tell that the uh, Stuxware software, there was a movie made, a wonderful documentary mm -hmm. made about that. Um, was, it cost billions, tens of billions, mm -hmm. to make a little software that would fit in a thumb drive, you mm -hmm. know and that would uh, uh, infect all those computers. Oh. So, I mean, it's, it, it, let your imagination fly about what can be done. Right, and the, the different ways it can be done. You can get so, uh, hacking that will come in, crash a the system, then sit quietly, let the system come back up, and then crash it again. Sure. And do this repeatedly. Like a very clever virus. Right. You, know, you just sort of imitate a, a real right. virus. Exactly. And yeah. make it trick people in this way and that way, right. and it goes to sleep and it wakes up. It travels from machine to machine. It does this, but then it does that. I mean, it's, it's um, there's, there's a schadenfreude about it. Right. You know, let's make the other guy crazy. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's essentially destabilize the other guy's culture and society. Right, right. And apparently, of course, the only reason it hasn't been particularly unleashed here is because they understand that we can do the same thing back to them. And you, know. and you deflect being caught. Right. And indeed, in this kind of warfare, Nobody is ever caught. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, even a hacker, a hacker can get away with doing this forever. Right. The number of hackers that have actually been prosecuted, gone to jail, minimal. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, a, a state hacker, he's right. not going to jail. He's right. going to remain in the state he's at. Right. And as long as that state has internet that's connected to other states, right. he doesn't have to stand up. <laughs> right. Yeah. He exactly. certainly doesn't have to cross the border into a dangerous place. Exactly. I mean, for him, he can just do it in a basement somewhere. Right. Yeah. Sitting there in the comfort of his office chair. Right. Yeah. It's so, I mean, I, you know, we, we have, we've identified two distinct kinds of cyber war. Um, and one, of course, is, is what you would expect. The normal, um, the normal strategy of trying to bust your, bust your uh, uh, opponent, mm -hmm. of, of ruining his command control in the military, of uh, in the civilian world, uh, taking right. his power plants down, uh, communications, uh, uh, all the infrastructure, water, sewer, um, you know, anything that's controlled by computers. And these days we know that everything right. is controlled by computers. The Internet of Things is about us. And every, everybody has, every, every, every little thing has an IP address and every little thing is therefore uh, vulnerable to a hacker. Right. I mean, does this set up a, a, an imbalance? If we are more, more dependent on our computers than the Russians are on their computers, then can they afford at some point to unleash a world war? They're a great they'll, target. They'll, they'll be less hurt by it because yeah. they're not, you know, they're not quite so dependent on. on but yeah, and and when you um, when you look and see what happened, you know, is that, that that whole thing about I'm going to go, I am going to identify all your power plants in the country, and I am going to run them down at a certain you know mm -hmm. point in time. I'm going to overspin them or underspin them or right. something, and so they don't work. They don't deliver power. So now. All the major cities, including cities in which there are federal establishments, mm -hmm. are down for a long time. Right. And nobody has a plan, and I really doubt that anybody does have a plan to bring them right back up. It doesn't work that way because you can't identify where the problem is. Okay, so now they're down, what happens? As I said before, the hospitals don't function, right. the roads don't function, right. communication is down, health is down. All of business in the economy is down. Mm -hmm. um, the whole thing has got to evolve into a state of nature in a fairly short time. You have no options. You can't go to work. You have no money. You can't get your money out of the bank. You can't drive. And, the, and, the, and people begin attacking each other in the state of nature. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, we're back to the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long that would take, but I'm sure somebody has modeled that, mm -hmm. how long that would oh, take. I'm sure, I'm sure that, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. How... how... How many of these systems you have to damage how badly before it really does become a cascading kind of event where uh, just avalanches, snowballs into complete and utter chaos? Chaos. Yeah. chaos. The chaos is no good for anybody. No, no. So, I mean, I suppose there's some guys uh, deep in the bowels of the Pentagon somewhere who have the same kind of plan on Russia. But as you said a minute ago, Russia is not as vulnerable as we are because we are more dependent on the Internet of Things than Russia is. Right. We're more advanced. And so we would, we would actually suffer more, more, more severely. Right, although arguably 
because just of their geographic locations, with so much of Russia being so far north, taking out the power grid there in the middle of winter could have a much more devastating effect much more quickly. In certain places, yeah. It just sort of freeze yeah. much of the country. You know? So I think we must be in a kind of war of deterrence. Right. Just sort of the nuclear, what the nuclear mutually, deterrence yeah, was all yeah, about. Mutually assured destruction, right? Because, yeah, everybody knows. I mean, I'm sure they, at some level, there, there is an engagement on right. this. At some level of spies and, and state agents as a, or, or just observers, they mm -hmm. know that if we do it to them, they do it to us and vice versa. Right. And then the whole world is in deep, deep trouble. Lives will be lost. Many, many lives will be lost. Right. The, human, the human species will be substantially reduced if there's a war like that. Mm -hmm. well. So this, this brings me, this gives me a headache on both sides. So this brings me to a, a break. When I get a headache, I have a break. Okay. So let's have a break and come back. I'm going to talk about how, why the Russians hacked our election. We already know they did. Mm -hmm. And how they hacked our, our election. Why and how they did that. Okay. We'll be right back after this break. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Living in this crazy world so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. So try a little more, more than every morning. Okay, we're, we're back, we're live with Ethan Allen on Likeable Science. And we're, and we're sort of tripping off an article that appeared in the MIT uh, uh, bulletin, a newsletter yesterday, was it? Right. And um, it is pretty, it's pretty interesting and scary stuff. We've talked about how, the, uh, how a, a state actor uh, can bring down the grid, can bring down a lot of infrastructure systems in, in the adversary and, uh, and sort of tear the whole society down in one fell swoop or in little pieces if you want, you know, just sort of keep you off balance. But let's talk now about political hacking, political cyber war, because mm -hmm. that's in a funny way, it's more pernicious. Mm -hmm. um, just to put it in perspective, uh, okay, it's nice to turn the power plant off, that has a profound immediate effect, but, but it's different when you get into the psyche of the country, right. into their essential social compact, and you begin turning it and twisting it and stressing it, uh, you know, together or at random with, with multiple attacks on the quality of thinking, the quality of thinking in a large, hundreds of millions of population. And you find vulnerability there too. Right, so they actually have that set up in one of the Ukrainian elections where all the computers for essentially all the news agencies were set to announce the guy the, the, guy the Russians wanted to win the election as being the winner. And the software was all plugged in and basically all ready to go, and they actually only apparently detected this about an hour before the... the what, did, what, did the what did it say? It, it basically sort of declared this one guy the winner, who was oh. not the winner. Oh! But, but all the news channels would have been come up saying this. Oh! You know, yeah. Very, very ugly oh. kind of thing. You know, once it's been widely announced, how can you announce it? You know, you can't, you can't take knowledge back at it that way. Oh, that is yeah. so interesting yeah. and so damaging. Yeah. yeah. Is so clever and, right. and insidious mm -hmm. <laughs> because now people, you know, first impressions count, right? right. People are all confused right. about who won, right? And yeah. they're reacting already to it, right? And then you're, yeah, you, you, again, you, you break down any faith in, in government, you break down any faith in your system being stable, uh, you make the truth a very amorphous thing, you know? yeah. And that's, yeah, well, that goes with a couple of propositions that they're working on, which I think are, you know. We have to turn the tables, turn the chessboard, and see it from their side. So they see us as, um, you know, a, a land of tumultuous, you know, de Tocqueville, tumultuous place where everybody mm -hmm. uh, has arguments and controversies and disagreements, mm -hmm. maybe more now than before. Um, they see it as a, a, a fabric of, uh, of, of a social compact that is always slightly fragile, mm -hmm. um, or sometimes more. I think it's pretty fragile right now because of recent events. Um, and, they, and they see people as maybe not so well in, educated. Mm -hmm. They see the schools in this country as not doing their job mm -hmm. for educating in civics and government and, 
the social compact in general, law. Right. I mean, uh, re recently there was a, um, uh, there was a, on the street, uh, question put to people to name the three branches of government in this country, citizens in this country, mm -hmm. in major metropolitan areas, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, many, many, scary many, couldn't mm -hmm. name the three branches of government. Oh. So we start out with that vulnerability. Right. And then on, lay it on top, and we have media, television media, and we have the commercials, and we have the big news organizations that, they're, that are actually confusing all by themselves mm -hmm. and have agendas, you know, that do not educate, but they try to advocate. Mm -hmm. And they're always throwing opinions at you, and sometimes their agendas are a mile wide. Mm -hmm. A good example would be Fox News. Mm -hmm. um, and so they know we are vulnerable but because we are not well-educated and that we are used to getting misinformation mm -hmm. and living by it. So if you and I sat in a room, you know, say, in the bowels of Moscow, mm -hmm. and we try to figure out you know, how we could confuse this country or mm -hmm. a great number of, mm, a great part of the demography of the country, right. we could figure it out, don't you think? I, I would never have guessed that they would do it in the way they did it. <laughs> it's that same team, you know, yeah. from, from the, the army and mm -hmm. uh, from industry, I guess, or the young hackers yeah. and, and from the criminal sector yeah. who are dedicated and under kind of a very strong contract to, to, to do hacking and to do cyber war. What better way to do cyber war than to knock off the essential system mm -hmm. of your adversary? Yeah. You know, to tear up the Constitution, mm -hmm. to tear up, as you said, right. public confidence. Yeah, right. You know? if, if they can undermine public confidence in our, in our form of government, in our governmental processes, yeah. uh, it's succeeded in, with, without sort of any bloodshed at all in, in doing a major, you know, a, a major attack against us. Yeah. You know? I think, I think your, your, uh, your, rest, your story about the, the Ukraine misinformation about who won the election mm -hmm. is a good example, but that, that is one of many, many techniques, I'm sure, mm -hmm. that are used by Russia now and that could be used in the future to confuse this country. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, there, there are probably dozens of techniques that the misinformation guys in Russia use mm -hmm. in order to confuse the American public into voting for Trump. Right. They wanted Trump to win, right. and they used a bunch of psychological and disinformation techniques to mm -hmm. achieve that. Yeah. If, we sat, if we sat for a while, Ethan, I'm sure we could figure out things to say mm -hmm. to actually confuse vulnerable people to go the wrong way on yeah. voting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it certainly, certainly happened, right? Yeah, and it'll happen again. Oh, yes. That's... So my big question, we have three or four minutes left. My big question, I don't know if the MIT article covered this, but what do you do? What does this country do to preserve its democracy in the face of this kind of insidious attack? Yeah. I, I, I mean, one thing I think you've got to do is teach people the art of critical thinking, you know, the, the, the art of scientific skepticism, and not just to sort of blindly go along with whatever you hear just because oh. some, some Yahoo says it. You know. I'm your class. Right. I'm your class, and you managed to get me in for an hour, mm -hmm. and we're having this civic discussion. You're mm -hmm. trying to strengthen me so I can resist uh, this kind of you know, right. attack. Uh, what do you say to me? I mean, don't you have to have like four or six or eight years of education to really do that kind <laughs> of critical thing? You're going to give it to me in an hour? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you, you do need to have people who are have some practice in thinking uh, and, and are willing to sort of re reflect a bit on their own thinking in order to, to develop that skill. But that whole business of sort of metacognition is not, is not as foreign as people seem to think. Uh, you know, kids can do it, can, kids will do it on, at times, but we don't practice it very much. And, you know, we have a, a culture that is not inclined to ask for the evidence and ask the hard questions, you know, why did you say that? What's the evidence here? What reason do you have that, that will convince me for this? Um, people aren't, aren't, we aren't. They're not, they're not going to not. I mean, right, and it's very hard to change them because you, you need decades to actually make that change. Right, you yeah. have to roll it back and start again right. with huge populations, and you have the to have youth. political will to do that. Right. Uh, very hard. You have, to, you have to say to them, through their, the lifetime of their education, right. you have to say, right. Do critical thinking. There will be people out there who try to misinform you and disinform you and deceive you and lie to you. You must know, you must think about 
when you are being lied to. So some years ago in the state of Virginia, I believe it was, was uh, redoing their uh, science standards for K-12 education. And this had passed through the state legislators uh, the bill. And apparently legislators raised this issue. They said, but, but you're asking people, students, to question things. And like, we don't want this. And it's like, yes, the, I mean, the whole business of science is to learn to ask good questions, right? That's when you, you know, it's not so much answers at all. It's, it's the questions that yeah, are really a question. important. And, uh, and clearly not enough people in this country are, are asking the right questions. No, no. Uh, and, and, you know, the funny thing, you know, when I go home at night or when I get up in the morning, I'm looking at the news, I'm looking at all the email that comes through, I'm looking at all that push technology, mm -hmm. which is pushing information on me. And... I delete a lot of stuff right off the bat. Mm -hmm. I, I make that, that choice, right? I'm always triaging mm -hmm. on what's coming at me. And a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. They get sucked in and they don't realize that that particular um, you know, email or, or social media push mm -hmm. is coming from somewhere in mm -hmm. Russia yeah. or, or by indirection. Mm -hmm. It's traveling all around the world and coming at me that way. And they yeah. think it's domestic. Yeah. They don't think it's for foreign yeah. power. But again, our, our own media don't do a very good job of telling us important stuff, and, and they downplay important things. Uh, I just was, uh, had the pleasure last week of having Chip Fletcher, uh, Dean of Soest, uh, in uh, giving some talks to, sure. to a, a workshop that I was giving. And he points out the, the, the climate change issues are pressing upon us, becoming day by day by day more and more critical, harder and harder to stop. Impacts become larger and larger, and people are just sort of ignoring it, like closing their eyes, covering their ears, pretending it's, it's not happening. And, yeah. and you know, it's not doing it's not doing yeah. us any good. It's certainly not going to do our kids any good. Our grandkids. It's true. They're losing place. time, yeah. critical time. Right. You know, uh, you know, the problem is that in order to combat this, you have to have a national leader who will get up and say, "We have to have an initiative here." to preserve our democracy, mm -hmm. to preserve our information systems, mm -hmm. to preserve our free press. Mm -hmm. And we have to do legislation. We have right. to have government organizations that go out and train people to right. critical thinking, whatever it is. We have to encourage the schools, the right. people, every, we have to get on the media. And we have to say, look, we need to preserve our democracy. Right. It's on all of you, every single one of you, every man, woman, and child to preserve our democracy, to remember the social compact and Trump is not going to do that quite the because he's part of the problem. Yeah, quite the he's contrary. totally compromised. Yeah, yeah. he regards the pre a free press as his enemy. He basically belittles the press and, and tries to make out like they're liars and racketeers and all. Just, oh, it's right, it's right. right so we lose four years mm -hmm. in you know At in least. the battle. We yeah. lose four years of trying to get an advantage or hold our advantage, and that's oh. the critical thing. Yeah. The best we can hope for is the next president will see this clearly, just as you and right. I have been talking yeah. about it. Yeah. Yes. So if you're able to talk to the next president, actually, <laughs> Ethan, what would you say to him? Talk to camera one. Uh, view the problems clearly. Be sure you understand the problem. Be sure you have a clear grasp of what the real challenge is, what the most important, the critical issues are. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, not science, it's everything. Yeah. It's science, it's technology, right. and it's social science. Right, yeah, you've got to get everyone, we all have to be working together on these. These are yeah. big, big, complex problems. Yeah, and the MIT uh, newsletter is probably a good place to start. Absolutely. Well, can you can tell people what it is and sure. how to so, find it? So it's the MIT download, they call it. You, you can get it, you can freely sign up for it. Uh, I think if you just go to MIT download, you can probably find it. I actually don't, don't recall how I got it, but it comes into my uh, mailbox every day now, and uh, always intriguing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this isn't uh, on the government. Uh, oh. Ultimately, it's on every single one of us. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Ethan. Thank Great you, to Jay. talk to you, as always. All right. Next time soon. All right. <laughs>